So now we're kind of talking about the opposite. So ionization energy was the amount of energy to remove an electron. Okay, so it took effort. Electron affinity is almost the complete opposite. And a lot of people get these two confused because you have to think ionization energy and then you have to kind of flip your thinking for electron affinity. So electron affinity is gaining electron. And gaining electron is a good thing in this sense. So the more energy, when I gain my electron, I'm gonna release energy, and that's a good thing. Okay, so electron affinity is the energy released when an electron is added to an isolated gaseous atom. So this isn't saying it takes energy. It's saying that I'm going to release energy. And if I release energy, I become more stable. So the more energy I release, the better. So in ionization energy, a lot of energy is a bad thing. Here, a lot of energy is a good thing. So it's complete opposite. All right, so let's think about this. I have my element, okay? And electron affinity, I'm gaining. I'm adding an electron. So I'm gonna add an electron. When you add an electron, you make an anion. And when I make this anion, I release energy. This is my electron affinity. This is how much energy is released. Okay. So the larger and more positive the electron affinity value, the more favorable. So I want a big one. The bigger, more electron affinity I have, the better. For ionization energy, it's the opposite. I don't want a lot of energy. So the higher, the worse. All right, so let's talk about the trends. This is the same thing as the ionization energy. There's a trend but it doesn't work as well. So you really want to follow the filled, half filled, partial filled rule before you go to the trend, okay? So the trend is not as consistent. So use this rule, and if you, if you have like both are filled, then you go to this rule. All right, so if we're talking about electron affinity, as I go from left to right, my effective nuclear charge increases. So remember, as I go from left to right, what happens is those electrons on the outside feel those protons more. So it feels the protons more, so it keeps it wanting to stay here. He doesn't want to float off and leave. He wants to stay. So if these guys have a high electron uh, effective nuclear charge, when another electron comes in, he also feels them really strong. So he's like, yeah, I want to come in. I, for sure I want to come into the group. So if I have a high effective nuclear charge, then I'm, it's going to be easier for me to add the electron. So when I go from left to right, my effective nuclear charge increases, meaning I fill those protons more. So if I fill the protons more, it's going to be easier for my electron to kind of add it to the atom. So that means that my electron affinity increases. He has an affinity, the electron has an affinity to be added. That's where the name comes from. He wants to be added. He feels those protons, he's excited, he's ready to be added. All right, when I go down a group, remember when I go down a group, my atom gets bigger, my size gets bigger. So if my size gets bigger, then I'm getting really far away from my nucleus. So if I have a big atom and my electron comes in, he's really far away and he's like, I don't really feel those protons. I don't really want to stay. But if it's a smaller atom, he's like, oh, okay, I'll chill. So if I'm going down a group, my size increases. So if my size increases, my electrons aren't going to want to add. So that means my electron affinity decreases. So this rule is kind of the same. If I'm filled, I'm happy. I don't want you to mess with me. If I'm half filled, I'm half 
happy. I don't want you to mess with me. I don't want you to remove electrons. I don't want you to add electrons, okay? So this is kind of the same. It's harder to add. They don't want another electron. They're happy the way they are. If I'm partially filled, I'm like, sure, I'll take another guy. So these guys are gonna be easier to add. He's okay with having some more electrons. All right, but remember, I have to know where those electrons are. Are they in filled shells, half-filled shells, partially filled shells? So I have to know where the electrons are at so I can put them in the right spot. So let's look at a problem. For each of these pairs, I want you to know who's gonna have a greater first electron affinity. So the first pair is I want you to compare aluminum to silicon. And then I want you to compare silicon to phosphorus. Who's gonna have the higher electron affinity? So to be able to figure this out, I have to draw my orbital diagrams. I have to do my electron configurations. So let's do aluminum. Here's aluminum. His noble gas is neon. Neon, 3s2, 3p1. And then the other one was silicon, right next to him. Neon, 3s2, 3p2. Let me draw my orbital diagrams. This is the 3s, he's got two. P has three lines, and he has one. 3s, he's got two electrons, p has three lines, three orientations, and he has two, so remember Hunt's rule, fill, fill. So up, 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 then down, down, down. So let's talk about their status. So he only has one guy. So he has one guy in there, so he's not full, and he's not half full. So he's partial, okay? So he's partially filled. All right, and then we go here. He's not full, he's not half filled, he's also partial. So here, since they're both partial, since he's partial, that, that electron where he would go, and he's partial, then that means that I don't have this rule to follow. Then that means now I go to the trend. So that kind of makes sense. If they have the exact same fill, then I go to the trend. Okay, so the tread was decrease down, increase over. So how are they related? So aluminum and silicon are right next to each other on the periodic table, left to right. So whenever I go from left to right, what was my trend? Increase. So when it asks who's gonna have the higher first electron affinity, if I go aluminum here, silicon here, because on the periodic table, this is how it goes, then it would be that silicon has a greater electron affinity than aluminum because of the trend, because these are the exact same. All right, let's do the next one. Silicon and phosphorus. So I already have silicon here, so I'm just going to do phosphorus. Whoops. All right, so phosphorus right next to silicon. So I need to write it out, neon, 3s2, 3p3. Draw my orbital diagram, my 3s, my three 3p lines. I have three p orbit, uh, electrons. So one, two, three. So now I look. He's not full, but he is half full. So he has a half full orbital. So when I'm comparing it, remember we already did silicon, silicon was partial, but he is half full. So based on my trend, who is going to be easier? Who is going to want to add an electron? Remember we said if you were full or half full, you don't want to add an electron. You don't want to mess up. So my, my problem is asking, who has the greater first electron affinity? Who really wants an electron? Who's gonna be easier to give one to? These guys don't want it, these guys want it. So whoever's partially filled, it's gonna have a higher electron affinity than filled and half filled. So that means he's half filled, he is 
going to want to, oh, sorry, I said that wrong. He is partially filled. I was pointing at the wrong guy. He's partially filled, which means he's going to be wanting that electron more than the half filled because the half filled doesn't want it. So the Si silicon is going to have a higher electron affinity than the phosphorus because he's partial and partial is easier to gain an electron than half full. Okay, so that's using my filled versus partially filled. It's easier to add an electron to a partially filled than a filled. So they're going to want the electron more, so they're going to have a greater electron affinity. Okay. All right, so we've talked about a lot of trends. It's a lot of trends in this chapter, okay? So this chart kind of summarizes up some of them. Atomic radius, ionization energy, electron affinity, metallic character. Talking about when I go down a column, what happens? The reason for that answer. When I go across, when I go left to right, what, what that trend is, and the reason for that answer. Okay? So it kind of puts it all together. Now we only have three more things we've got to talk about in this chapter. I know it's a lot. Just kind of keep it. But the good thing is they're all kind of in their own little area. All right? So the next thing we're going to talk about is we, we talked about electron affinity and we talked about ionization energy. So making ionization energy is removing, making a cation. Electron affinity is adding an electron, making an anion. So now I know how to make an electron, I mean an ion, a cation or an anion, but how do I write those electron configurations? So the next thing we're going to work on is writing electron configurations for anions and for cations.